attention to my community section, which I highly recommend you do. If uh, you're interested in correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, you will know that I put a post up where I said, since the beginning of 2018, I've invested thousands of hours to create around 900 videos on this YouTube channel, free to study for the public. I've covered a lot of ground. I've covered every aspect of correct sentence structure that comes to mind. Moving forward, what type of videos would you like to see? And I do appreciate the people that took the time to offer their suggestions. And I'm going to address some of those suggestions right here. Uh, for the Pascal, says that they would like to see more stop and corrects and audits of the quantum community, sovereign citizens. Now, when I look at that and I see that they, that Pascal would like to see more stop and corrects, then that tells me that Pascal would like to see more mistakes from me because I'm the only one that's going to be stopping and correcting on this channel. Folks, ladies and gentlemen, Pascal, have you ever, ever, ever heard me, witnessed me say in a video or anywhere else that so-and-so needs to stop and correct? I've never told anyone to stop and correct. It's not my thing. I don't have a position to do that. I only have the authority to stop and correct myself. You see what I'm saying? To me, that's just presumptuous for someone to go around saying, you need to stop and correct. That's goofy. <laughs> to me, it's goofy. But I definitely will do more audits of the quantum community and, you know, common law, sovereign citizen type stuff. As it comes through my port of sensation, I'll definitely do more reaction videos and also grammar audits uh, if necessary. Certainly. For the claimant says they would like, they think it would be nice to see more continuum conversations. I found some of these videos very informative and entertaining. I'm aware that it requires willing guests to participate. So maybe not as easy to produce. That is correct for the claimant. It's just a matter of being able to be in the same domain of now space together at the same time. Of course, I could have, uh, could probably get something with Ricardo again, do another one with him. I have a few other people on tap that said they would do it, but we just haven't gotten around to scheduling it yet. You know, it's just coordinating schedules pretty much. But that is something definitely I'd be interested in uh, producing. Another individual said that they'd like to see an analysis of global war reset and the globalist uncontrolled demolition of Western society. Now, you're probably not going to see me do something like that because to me, that is all based on assumption presumption. Yes, I understand it. I mean, global war. What is a globe? Is that what we live on? I don't know. I can't certify it. But as far as war, yes, war goes on. And I can give you my analysis of that right here. My own personal perception of it is that the powers that be uh, are greedy. 
don't really care too much about life and are only worried about money and control. So that's the uh, long and short of war as far as I'm concerned. Reset, again, assumption, presumption. Reset what? No set. RE means no SET, no set. So I probably won't be doing anything about that. And there are plenty of other channels on YouTube that are more than willing to presume and assume and offer their opinions on that. Globalist uncontrolled demolition of Western society. I think it's, if you're going to go down that route, I feel that it's very controlled. It's completely within someone's control. It's contingent upon the members of Western society to educate themselves, to cultivate their knowledge, and not allow them to be demolished. No molished. If you're easily led, well, then that's the path that uh, I guess the cosmos has chosen for you, or that is most beneficial to your learning. So that's the path you're going to go down. But folks, everybody has a choice. Everybody has a choice. Educate yourself or not. It's up to you. Rube Star says they vote for videos on me doing salvages on words. I only do uh, salvages when they're needed. Like if I come across a word in my own contracts where I'm doing business and it's like, well, I need to use this word and something's wrong with it or not quite right and no one's claimed it, no one has a correct claim on it, I'll, I'll salvage it. And then, of course, I make it open source and available to the public. I've done that several times. But I, I'm, of course, open to do more of those as they come up. And so thus far, I haven't had any issues lately. Quadruple A says, I would like to see a court venue video. I'm not sure what you mean by that, court venue video. I am a document contract court authority. I do produce court venues. I have done videos. Yeah, I guess you're going to have to be a little bit more specific on that. And I would like syntax videos also, mechanics videos, and some skit videos. So you would like, so quadruple A, you're asking me to just repeat the information that's already on the channel. So I'm pretty sure my syntax playlist has anywhere around 75 or more videos on it, right? Skip videos, those, those are require a lot of effort to produce, but I'm willing to I definitely take that as a suggestion. Like David Wood Miller core rental complaint video. I'm not going to do something like that on this channel because this channel is for people that want to learn grammar. Core rental complaints and things like that, well, I don't use the word complaint because I don't like complaining, so I don't use that. Uh, but I would only teach that in the confidential to someone that has closure on the grammar. And that way it's safe for them to use. I'm not going to put stuff like out there, like that out there uh, so that people can get in trouble. So, no, you're not going to see me do anything like that. There's lots of people that think they know how that stuff works. And, I mean, you can go check them out. But you're not going to see that from me. The only way that you're going to get that from me, quadruple A, is if you take workshops from me. Or you prove to me that you have rudimentary closure on the grammar. And you can safely then acquire this knowledge. Then I will teach it to you in the confidential. No problem. But the grammar comes first. I knew that you would only do that in the confidential. Well, if you knew that, why did you ask? That's kind of nefarious, underhanded and shady, bro. I see you. Pascal, I wanted to ask you a question, Pascal. Glad you're here. Okay, you asked for more stop and corrects. When you, when you say that, you mean you want me to stop and correct myself? 
Is that what you're asking? Because I have never, ever, not one time ever on this channel commanded or demanded that someone stop or correct. I'm not here to tell other people to stop and correct. That's goofy to me. I don't do it. So I'm thinking you mean you want me to stop and correct. What would you like me to stop and correct? Because if you mean you want me to stop and correct other people, that's not my responsibility. It's their responsibility. It's each man or woman's responsibility to stop and correct themselves if needed. It's not for me to tell you to stop and correct. <laughs> That's presumptuous. If you're trespassing on me, I can stop you. But I'm not going to correct you. Because if you know what correct means, you know what correct means? Correct means together along the same line, the same tract, the same path. And if you stop and correct someone, you stop them, and then you correct them, now you're forcing them to go along the same path that you are. Why would you want to force someone to do anything? The only thing I'm going to force you to do is to stop if you're trespassing on me. And that's the difference between me and just about everybody else out there in this domain. I try to bring, you know, as many positive vibes as I can. And I'm very, very careful not to trespass. I do get cheeky and sarcastic at times, but I've never told someone to stop and correct. Never. I leave that to the egomaniacs out there. So Pascal, if you could clarify that. I'd appreciate it. I think that's about it, the people that have commented on that video so far. I see a comment on another video from For the Dharma. And they write out, let's, let me see if I can share my screen here so you can see what I'm talking about here. Oh, seriously, I would like any kind of video regarding correct sentence structure. What else could you do, really? Yeah, really. What else could I do? This is what I do. <laughs> I can talk about the same old shit from different angles. But that would be, you know... Supposing that you have watched every video on this channel multiple times, which I highly doubt that you have. But there are sometimes some things like I'm just thinking of a couple things right now. Like uh, one time I had to do a video regarding the apostrophe because some people don't know what that is or how it's used. Um, I had to do a video on abbreviations because people didn't understand how the the full stop worked in an abbreviation and worked at the end of a sentence and how an abbreviation worked at the end of the sentence so i had to do a couple videos on that a few months ago um of course did the video on the colons i've done many videos on the conjunction i've done videos on why i use all caps sometimes and why i don't uh As far as I watched, and I truly watched almost everything. Quadruple A, percentage-wise, from 0 to 100%. If you've watched all these videos, and you say you truly watched them, well, where would you put your correct sentence structure knowledge then? Percentage-wise. While you think about that, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, for the Dharma says, for the claimant's question of the live streams warns, 
is with the solicitude of a male with the time plan of the minus three hours with the honor and with the grace by the claimant questioner. For the claimant questioner of the honor and of the grace is with the minus three hours of the time plan with an email of the solicitude with the live streams warns for the claimant's question. Okay, first of all, Eric, I don't see a question here. There is no question mark. This is not a correct sentence structure question. Although the positional sequencing is reminiscent of a correct sentence structure, it's correct. I do not cognize what it is you're after here. I don't see a question and I don't understand what you're saying. The source, the 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 cause of the sentence is claimant's question. What's the claimant's question is the live streams warns. What's it mean live streams warns? What what is that? I don't know what that means. I don't know how a live stream can warn anything. I know people can warn people, but I don't know what it means to be live stream hyphen warns because you're using warns as being possessed by live stream. And in the fiction, I know what warns is, but in the fact, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what you mean by that. And then we have solicitude. I don't know what that means. I know what it means to solicit, but that's possessing the live streams warn. So the live streams warning is soliciting something concerning an email. What email? Whose email? Your email? My email? Whose email? What's possessing the email? The time plan. Time is no contract, but with the honor and the grace. We don't, I don't know what that means. The time plan is possessing the email, which is concerned with soliciting, which is possessing a live stream warning, which is concerned, which is, and what's that concerned with? Minus three hours. Minus three hours from what? Negative three hours. How can you have negative three anything? There's only positive performance. So I don't know. Yeah. So I don't, I have no clue what's going on there. Maybe you can explain it in plain, simple English. As I say, you know, in, in several videos as well, if you don't know correct sentence structure, it's a good idea just to use very clear, concise, efficient, plain, simple English. Or you can follow my example. And write out your correct sentence structure and then translate it to plain, simple English right afterwards. That way there can be no mistaking what you mean. Things will be cleared up. You have all the bases covered. So, yeah, I have no idea what that means. I think around 40 to a 50% cognition is a big thing because English is not my first language. It's a double study to me. Yes, it is a big thing. Um, one of my best students, some of my best students, English is not their first language, but actually they're the fastest learners for some reason. It's just, I don't think that has anything to do with it, really. I think it has to do with how motivated a person is. That's what I think. I had a, I'm not going to say who it was, but I had a, a f individual who was very nervous and afraid to, uh, to take classes from me. They wanted to actually take a class with me with an interpreter because they were worried they didn't know plain, simple English well enough. But after I did a consultation with them, I, I sort of assured them gave them some surety that it's okay. It's okay. You don't need a third party in here. You and I can communicate just fine. And then within one or two workshops, man, the guy was one of my best students, is one of my best students. This guy who his grasp of plain, simple English, you know, accent wise and speaking wise is probably about 75% maybe with my humble assessment. 
like if you don't if you're not familiar with the language that he normally speaks you would have a probably have a hard time understanding his accent but I, I since i you know language is my thing i'm able to cognize him and so i'm able to teach him and he knows correct sentence structure better than most of my English students. And English is not his first language. It's not even his second language or third language. So, you know, some people have done some amazing things out there. I had a few setbacks also due to the fiction, which made me forget a lot. And I had to re-up the knowledge. I got this three times done to me by the fiction. I always look at things from a different point of view, quadruple A. When I look at what a, you know, a setback, I mean, you can call it a setback, I guess. But think about an arrow. When you notch an arrow onto a bow, you have to pull the arrow back in order to send it forward. So sometimes that it's a, that's what has to happen. It's a learning experience. And... I don't like to think of things in terms of someone or something doing something to me as if I'm a victim. I take a slightly different psychological uh, uh, stance on that. It's my choice. Um, if something happens where I get put in a situation where something that could be construed as negative happens to me, it's nobody's fault but mine. Right. It's not it's something I'm missing. And I try really hard, and, you know, with diligence to try and fix it, whatever it is. I'm not one of these people that, that continually says, oh, no, why does this always happen to me? Man, they're always picking on me. I didn't even do anything. Instead of like taking that position, I flip it. And I say, OK, what what what? What do I need to adjust here? What do I need to update here? What do I have to learn so that this doesn't happen again? That's the way I look at things. I guess Pascal's not here anymore, is he? Because he didn't answer my question, which is unfortunate. I wish that he would have. Because I would really like to know what he meant. And I would also like to know what the For the Dharma Oh, actually, Eric is here. Eric, if you're still here, if you could translate that sentence I read that you wrote into plain, simple English, because I don't understand what you're what you're uh, stating at all. Number one, I don't see a question. And number two, I see claim it's question, but I don't see a claim. I don't see the word claim in there anywhere. Let me double check, though. Yeah, there is no claim in your sentence so i'm you know it's confusing to me an email diffusion three hours prior to the live streams for the ease to attend diffusion are you asking for a notification are you asking me to send out notifications here's the thing eric i don't know if i'm going live three hours before I don't, I don't have that type of schedule. If I go live, it's because it's, oh, hey, I got about an hour to, to do something, and I feel up to it, and I do a live stream. So there's, that's not possible, really, because, first of all, I don't get enough views to do that. Like, right now, I have five viewers. If I would get, like, 35 to 50 views on a live stream, yeah, then I, could, then I would definitely set aside. You know, I would, I would definitely set aside time. Like, if you're a member, Eric, I, if you remember, at the end of December, I came into January saying that I was only going to do live streams for members, right? And I did a couple live streams, members-only live streams for members. And I sent out notifications for that live stream within, I think, 24 hours. I gave notice. But nobody showed up. No member, like one or two members showed up. 
out of the 50 that were there that, that I had. So it just wasn't, it's just it's not feasible to do that for me. That's why they're spontaneous. If you, I do have an email list that I do send out notifications to sometimes for video premieres and sometimes for live streams. If you want to be put on that list, um, send me an email, Eric, and tell me, say, yes, please put me on your email notification list, notification, G-N-O-tification list, and I'll do that, and I'll put you on the list, and if I do send out a notification, you'll be one of the first ones to get it. Those that want to learn this will learn it. They'll do what it takes to learn it. Those that don't do what it takes won't learn it. It's that simple. What you put in is what you get out. With very few exceptions. So is anybody... Uh, I'm sure the people I got here that are watching this... I'm sure you watch other videos on YouTube. Is there any news, anything new or exciting going on in other corners of the quantum grammar contingent? Any new and exciting uh, developments? Has, uh, hey, has the world been freed by Russell J. Gould yet? Have they brought him forth yet? Is he in the, the White House? Is he commander of the Starfleet yet? Anything going on over there? Or how about um, Mark Lord Case K. Kishon Christopher? Has he locked up all the uh, child abusers? Um, has he shut down all the attorney's offices yet? Are all the attorney's offices in England vacant now because he shut them down? <laughs> Has he filled up the quantum prisons with quantum criminals yet? <laughs> Just asking for a friend. You know, I don't care. I don't want to know what's going on. My friend does, though. If you have any info on that. Jonathan Todd says... I pay no attention to any other quantum grammar people. It's a complete waste of time. Well, I appreciate that, Jonathan. It's good to see you on here. Me, myself, personally, I don't participate with the concept of wasted time. Because, first of all, time doesn't exist. And to me, nothing is a waste. Nothing is ever wasted. It's all a learning experience. For me, it's all meant to happen. So that doesn't apply to me. But if that's the way you look at things, hey, more power to you. Appreciate uh, appreciate you being here. Eric says, my main concern on the sentence is on the mechanic of how you would ask the same request on correct sentence structure. Well, first you'd have to get a, give me a clear, plain, simple English question first. Give me a plain, simple English question. And please don't use words like diffusion or be very simple about it. The simpler, the better, as far as a beginner using correct sentence structure. Which I don't know where you are on that scale of zero to 100 percentage-wise with correct sentence structure knowledge. But I don't think I've ever done a workshop with you, so I have no way of knowing what your knowledge level is. But if you're able to be very brief and efficient with your question, I'll... Uh, I'll translate it. If I could only get out what I put into crypto. <laughs> Funny you mentioned Russell is leading a parade down my street in a white robe and golden staff right now. Rolls, pedals, and everything. Really? Send me a video. Send, send me a Snapchat, bro. May you send... A notification three hours before the live stream by email. We'll turn this into a little 
mini class. Oh yeah, okay, I remember you now. Um, man, Ivanian just whew, took off. Man, that guy learned so fast, it's crazy how fast he learned. Such a good guy, too. Such a good guy. I can't say enough nice things about Avandian after getting to know him and developing a trust count with the guy. Amazing, amazing individual. I'm so blessed to uh, have been in, be in contact with that fella. All right, let me get to this sentence here. All right, so what is the... Uh, Main idea behind this sentence. What's the what's being claimed here? What is it a claim of? It's a request. It's a question, obviously, right? So there's a couple different ways to do this. Literally, I will write it as a question first. So let's start off like this. Actually, let's put it by itself. So for the claim of the notice is with the performance of the live stream with the send of the email with the I see what you're saying now about the minus three hours. How would you so that that's easy. I mean, if you have the uh, the actual time of the, the live stream, if you knew when the live stream was going to be, say it's going to be at, uh, let's see, it's 3 p.m., 3.07 p.m. Eastern Standard here right now. So if I was going to send it three hours before, then I would send it at noon. Then I would say... So for the claim of the notice is with the performance of the live stream with the send of the mail with the continuum location of the 12 o'clock noon Eastern Standard. With the. I have to put notice again in here and here. The continuum location of the top and Eastern Standard. Actually, we don't need noticing it, we'll say broadcast.
Okay, let's try this. For the claim of the notice, now, now I could even go even further than this. Let's 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 bring it full circle. There. For the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the claim of the notice, with the performance of the live stream, with the send of the email, with the continuing location of the 12 noon Eastern Standard, with the broadcast and with the participation of the 1500 Eastern Standard live stream. Hey, I just thought of something. Let's put location here. So we know that that is also a location, but it's a different location than this location with the volition by the claimant, Jason Matthew Glass. And then backwards, it would be for the claimant of the volition is with the 1500 Easter standard of the location and of the broadcast with the 12 noon Eastern standard of the continuum location with the email of the send with the live stream of the performance with the notice of the claim, with the facts, with the claimant's knowledge. So going forward, the, the uh, cause is claimant's knowledge, concerned with the facts, singular verb is, claim is possessing the facts and concerned with the notice. So we know it's a notice. What's possessing the notice? The performance. What's possess or what's con the notice concerned with? The live stream. Performance of the live stream. What's possessing the live stream? The send. What's the send concerned with? Oh, we're sending an email. What's possessing the email? The continuum location. So when are we sending the email? Oh, it's concerned with 12 noon. That's when the email is going out. What's possessing that location? Information about the broadcast and location. What's the location and broadcast concerned with? the three o'clock Eastern Standard live stream. So I'm sending out a notice at 12 noon for a live stream that's gonna happen at three o'clock, three hours later. And what's possessing the Eastern Standard live stream and all the rest of it? The volition. And who's the authority of the volition? The claimant. So that's my statement to you. Okay, are you ready for this? Let me Let me see if there's any comments here. Okay. I search for the root of the vine. It seems tangible. Well, it may seem tangible, but what I'm saying is in correct sentence structure, you wouldn't claim a negative. Negative three hours minus anything. You wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. If you want to do that with your knowledge level, what you said, 40 or 50%, that's up to you. But I never have ever used that word, and I don't have any volition to use that word. So that's completely up to you. So let me go back to this before I lose my train of thought and show you a little bit of magic. So how do you turn this into a question? This is a statement. How do you turn it into a question? I forgot Ray's wisdom has correct content regarding correct sentence structure. That is correct because Ricardo is one of my best students and I can certify what he knows. Outside of that, I can't certify anybody else. See this verb? Put it here.
There's your question. Is for the claimant's knowledge of the facts with the claim of the notice, with the performance of the live stream, with the send of the email, with the continuum location of the 12 noon Eastern Standard, with the broadcast and with the location of the 1500 Eastern Standard live stream, with the volition by the claimant, Jason Matthew Glass? There's your question. You've just asked me. Can you send out an email three hours before? But instead of leading me to guess what three hours before means, I've actually put in there one location when the email gets sent, 12 o'clock, and when the live stream happens, 1,500 hours, three hours later. So it's very specific. You put the verb at the beginning. And then the syntax would be two, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, and then five, six, seven all the way down the line. Putting a verb at the beginning of a correct sentence structure. Let me get back to my screen here. Okay, it functions much like putting a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word. Why is a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word? No contract. Why is it a particle of negation? Because vowels are syntaxed as sort of non-tangible contract condition of state sort of they have a verbial or adverbial condition of state a non-tangible condition of state a thinking moving condition of state so if you put the thinking before there's anything to think about you have no direction to go in you don't know where you're going that's why a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word means no one of the reasons so this is a question because you put the verb of the thinking first before there's anything to think about. When you create a correct sentence structure, you have to have two points with which to draw your straight line. And then you put of, of contract communication, then you put your verb in. Your verb of the thinking then goes in to take the cause and the concern and go into the possessive and the authority and so on and so forth. So that first zero is for the claimant's knowledge. That second zero is of the facts. Now you've established your correct line, your geometric level playing field together along the same track. You've established that. But when you put the verb first, when you put the thinking first, now you have no idea where that line goes. You don't know if it goes that way, if it goes that way, if it's this way, that way, you don't know. That's why it's a question. You're putting the thinking first before there's something to think about because you don't know what to think about. Ergo, it's a question. Verb comes first. It's a question. So, yeah, if you uh, stop studying correct sentence structure before it has a chance to crystallize as a foundation within your psyche, within your formatory apparatus, you'll lose it. That's why you have to do it every single day. It's like walking up a down escalator. If you're doing anything except for putting one foot in front of the other very briskly, you're going backwards. So I've just given you closure on something that no one in this chat knew about before they came here today. And that was how to create a correct sentence structure question. I took a sentence that an impromptu question that a viewer asked me on the spot. I took it in real now space, in real time, and translated it into a correct sentence structure, just like they asked me to. And then I showed them how to create a question with it. Folks, name anyone else on the internet that has ever done that within this, you know, quantum grammar community. I don't see I don't see the C and C's doing that. I don't see the chief federal blah blah blahs doing that. Maybe I tooted my own horn a little bit there. I apologize for that. I need to bring myself back down to humility because I am definitely blessed to be here. Thank you, quadruple A, for being here. I appreciate your viewership. 
Oh man, thank you for the uh, super chat, quadruple A. I appreciate it, man. It means a lot. Same thing, Andrew. Thank you for the coffee. Much love. Much love. Thank you for everybody here that uh, attended this and learned something from it. Of course, I will try to take the best bits of this and republish it in a, another video for sake of efficiency and brevity and clarity so that you don't have to get through all the other BS to get to the grammar part. I'll put the grammar part out there. Um, but if you want to watch it unedited, become a member. And I see that most of the viewers in the chat are members, except for Pascal, uh, except for Pascal, Jonathan, Todd, and XR Peaky Blinder are not members. But if you want to watch it, you can become a member and go watch it and a host of other unedited live streams and a host of other exclusive content that only the members and the loyalist contributors tier get to see. But of course, there's always the 900 or so public videos that you can enjoy as well. All right, folks. Thank you for joining me. It's been fun. Is there a video about rejecting mail using correct sentence structure? Absolutely not, Jonathan, because this is a channel about grammar. First, you have to learn the grammar first. And of course, if you can certify that you have a certain level of grammar to me, and the way we would do that is through a private video consultation, takes 10 to 15 minutes, I can give you a test if you want to take my test. Warning, no one's passed it yet. But if you take the test and prove to me that you know correct sentence structure, I would be more than happy to share those mechanics with you. Because you have to have no correct sentence structure before you can use it for something like that. And looking through this chat, I only know one individual that came into the chat that has the knowledge level to do that. And that's Pascal. Pascal could do that because I've certified his knowledge level. But if I was to just put stuff out there like that, I'd be putting people in danger. That's what I thought you'd say. Well, if you knew I was going to say that again, like the quadruple A, why ask questions you already know the answer to? That's why I don't. That's why personally I don't use correct sentence structure questions because I find them to be very condescending, and I I already know the answer to a question if I'm going to ask it. You know what I mean? So I never use correct sentence structure questions in my documents. Never, 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 never. That doesn't mean you don't have to use them. You can use them if you want to, but I don't use that. Because I, first of all, I'm not going to ask the fiction a question. Because that means I want something from them. And I don't want anything from them. Right? Second of all, I already know the answer to the question. Third of all, I'm the one that sets the terms and conditions. And they have to comply. Period. End of story. No questions needed. So, yeah, Jonathan, if you're ever interested in learning the grammar... You know my email address, dude. Decide to get serious and buckle down and take a couple workshops. I'm here. Thank you for joining. Thank for your participation. Peace. If you would like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, I offer several choices. The first one and the easiest one is to study the almost 900 free public videos on this YouTube channel that you're watching right now. The second option, if you want to see new content, is to click the Join button on my main YouTube page or under any video that you're watching. Click the Join button and you will see two tiers of membership. If you choose the second tier, the Loyalist Contributor tier, and you join that for a monthly support donation, you'll get new content, fresh content. Exclusive content not available to the public every month. But keep in mind, there's already almost 900 videos here free to the public to study. 
And the third option is to contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen. And this is for the serious students only. And apply for a correct grammar workshop. But please include your correct name when contacting me. And I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation. And you and I will have a conversation. You can ask me whatever you want. I'll answer your questions. I'll do the same with you. I'll ask you questions and we'll see if indeed you are really serious or not. Thank you.